And uh, we're in a Zoom webinar. Um, chat now is working, so please feel free to uh, have conversations uh, you know, in, in, in that as the presentation goes on today. We do ask that if you have questions for our speaker to use the Q&A function, um, we will be turning to those uh, at the end of his presentation and uh, we'll be asking those. Um, and uh, other than that, um, I did want, did want to just confirm we are recording this and it will be shared publicly uh, on the uh, Linked Open Data Working Group's YouTube channel at the end of this. Um, should you wish to ask questions anonymously, you may do so in the Q&A by checking the anonymous checkbox. Um, if you, you are certainly welcome to do so, but you are also invited to uh, keep your name there so that we know who we are, we are answering. Um, next uh, on the agenda, I am going to pass it over to Shelley uh, Lee, who will give just a brief overview of the Linked Open Data Working Group for those of you who may not be familiar with it. And then I'll introduce Jim and we can get started with the main event. So, Shelley. Thank you, Jim. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Ken. And thank you, Jim, for, pre for, pre for presenting today. Um, my name is Xiao Li Li. I'm Head of Content Support Services at University of California Davis Library. So um, as Ken mentioned, I'm very happy to, to see many of you joined our first community event. And um, we will have another event coming coming in a couple months, which Ken will provide information at the end of presentation. So this working group is a joint working group of two user communities, uh, IGLU, which is international um, user group for Xlibris products, and uh, ILUNA, which is North American user group. So our group has been working um, very diligently and to promote linked data features and the services and serve as a bridge between users group as well as um, Xlibris. So we have some um, um, very close working relationship with all the Xlibris product groups, such as AMA, Primo, and um, other things. But those are the two primary groups, and given there's a more features and the services available in those two products. And we have um, a website, which I'm sending, I'm posting the link into chat. So if you want to learn more about the group and also group event and the past event recording link, all are on the website. So here, I just want to say, I am very fortunate to have a very dedicated group of members. They have been working. Um, we meet every month, and then in between, there's a subgroup are doing the work as well. So one of the subgroup is uh, organizing community event, uh, which can be training event or can be collecting feedback and so on. So I really appreciate all members' effort and their time. So with that. Um, Thank, thank again to Ken for facilitating and for Jim to presenting and for all of you attending. Thanks, Ken, back to you. All right, well, thank you, Shaoli. So now uh, we will turn to uh, the, the, our, our primary speaker for the day. Um, I'd like to introduce Jim Hahn, who is uh, head of metadata research at the University of Pennsylvania Libraries where he works across all the libraries, developing a vision for the services, technologies, and policies to enhance discovery of collections and incorporating international standards and best practices for linked data and metadata. He plays a critical role in the Penn Library's participation in the LD4 community and in the Share VDE project, as well as uh, in developing future partnerships. So I will stop my screen sharing and enable Jim to share his, and I am, Looking forward to hearing what we have to learn from Jim. So Jim, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks so much. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Shelly. Um, very excited to uh, be chatting with everyone here today. Um, and let me bring up the slides here. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Um, thanks again for the introduction. 
Um, I've been working in this sort of domain of uh, libraries for the past three years, and I've really benefited a lot from the working groups that I'm a part of. Just this, this is just an example of them, but ShareBDE colleagues, uh, colleagues in the LD4 community. Um, it's a, uh, it's been without sort of their uh, input and conversation. Um, a lot of this doesn't really happen, so I'm 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 very appreciative um, for those collaborations. Um, in terms of what I'd like to talk about today, um, I'm going to try to give a, you know, a big sort of uh, draw a big circle around all of our experimentation at Penn, and it involves both um, two linked data editors and also kind of foregrounding the work as BibFrame and the discovery possibilities. Um, and so, um, you know, we'll talk about, you know, what, what BibFrame is you know, enabling now and then how we've um, worked to incorporate this new standard into um, Alma. So um, BibFrame, those of you who are here most likely have heard of it. Um, there's a great website with resources, uh, LOC, um, Library of Congress. So I, I believe, you know, what we're, what we're engaged in in this project has, has been multi years and, you know, many before me have, have worked on this and it's really a data model, right? And this data model is informed by IFLA, LRM, also inspired by RDA. Um, I think there's some good cross pollination. Um, we have some core data models of work, instance, and item. Uh, these core entities, um, it's theorized that they're going to help improve discovery, help improve the reach of libraries, both sort of in internal library systems and uh, outside of library systems. Now, I would say that you know our previous structures, I think, uh, did um, really great work. Um, in some cases, um, our previous structures were attempting to describe these entities. And so in our marked record, we might've had some portions of these. And so I wouldn't say it's a, a huge break, although um, certainly linked data does differ in important ways from our traditional models of like storage retrieval and discovery. There are some continuities. And I think those continuities are that these entities that we were grappling with in Mark, I think we're better able to describe them in Bibfrom. Um, and, and so that's that's kind of the case for, for why we want to and why we're engaged in this project and what we're continuing on in this project is that we, we believe linked data can um, better support what we're trying to do with description. And, um, and we're building on um, what has already happened in description, right? Um, within Alma, um, because this is um, sort of a, a focus on getting like data into Alma, I'm gonna just sort of review what's available. We see Alma at, at Penn, this is our, you know, this is the backbone of our source record storage. So we have, you know, Mark within Alma. And then if you enable um, the linked data integration, um, you can publish some uh, JSON-LD. There's also the possibility to using, um, relying on the uh, Library of Congress transformation tooling, uh, take your mark, express it as a, a, this Library of Congress bit frame in RDF XML. So there's, um, there's already some functionality here, but you know what's key is that Alma is like, this is just the backbone for the mark that we have. And then building on the mark, um, there's been this uh, sort of enrichment. Yeah, this is again, um, you could check out this integration page um, where there's been URI enrichment um, and um, translating into like various LD formats. And so you have this data, um, I would say, so this says LD record, I would say, um, you have some some linked data that um, has sort of a, is a pro, is a set of properties, right? And you try to draw a circle around those properties. Usually, that circle is your bib frame work, your bib frame instance, your bib frame item, right? Um, 
So this is an example of one linked data graph that you can enable um, in your Alma. Uh, this is JSON LD. Um, it's not super pretty for us to look at, but uh, computers uh, uh, can make good use of this uh, API programs, really. And then um, here's an example of, so this is, you can inspect your, your instance in Alma. You can send an LMS ID. So this is the pen uh, link data integration. So here you send an LMS ID. And so it's generated based on the good work that Library of Congress has done. And then uh, Alma's, you know, doing this process for us in the background. So, you know, on the fly, we can get uh, this published. So we, we can get these instances in Alma. And of course, you know, I have to mention like, this is a work in progress. So uh, things are evolving even now, uh, which is good because I think they're evolving into ways that will make linked data more stable, reliable, and um, ultimately usable. Uh, we are able to, using um, uh, sort of in development APIs, I'm sort of a development partner for Ex Libris. So what I've been doing is API. This is the structure of um, RDF XML in you know, a simple bit frame record that is in Alma. And so, as you can see, this is a, a simple record view of the frame. Um, so web APIs, these have been around for a while. Um, but what I wanted to highlight here is, you know, we saw these slides with some, some JSON LD that didn't look very pretty. We saw some XML that, depending on whether or not you like to look at XML or not, may have been not great to look at. But really, those are, um, those are important for, say, you know, a, a program to, um, uh, a program that can parse it. So really, um, the basis for what I'm going to talk about in linked data editors relies on these web APIs. Um, and so what it, you know, what's happening really when we're using these web APIs is, so there's some website and you're sending, maybe you're sending your XML data into Alma and because Alma knows how to, um, process that XML data, it'll, it'll send you this response that says, okay, you know, I've created a bib record and it can say, I've created a bib record for your mark or the additions that sort of these, these new and development APIs for bib frame are saying, okay, you know, we've created that. You've sent us this XML with the right parameters. Um, we're going to send you back the MMS ID of the bib frame description um, instance record that we've created. Um, and this is just, uh, this is kind of a, I would say it's an oldie, but a goodie in the sense that, um, Posting, posting XML has been around for a really long time. So it's a, a standard web technology. So we're doing this new sort of, I don't know, quote unquote, uh, new quote unquote uh, data model that uh, we are actually using a very old technique to do both posting XML and getting XML back. This is, uh, I mean, the whole uh, infrastructure and architecture of the web is restful. So it's a restful um, project, really. So, you know, um, this is the um, this is the part of the web that is is making those uh, these linked data applications work. So, let's move into more detail about the Alma API. Now, um, you've perhaps you've used this if you've been working with Alma for a time, but if you haven't, I'll just give a quick run through. Alma has this API that we can post new records into the system. And, you know, for testing at Penn, of course, we've used our Alma sandbox. We've gotten a lot of mileage out of that. Um, in this Alma API, um, it's accepting Mark XML. And then there's a specific root element that you need to provide. And then also in the Alma API, you can specify this import profile ID. And that's configured from Alma admin. So in in Alma, you you set that up, and we set up our import profile to accept Mark XML. This is important for when we're taking an enriched Mark, so Mark with like sort of linky Mark that we've generated from Synopia, which I'm gonna talk about in more in depth. But uh, this is what this looks like. Um, this 
that's this is the bit I was talking about. So this is how you can send this mark XML into all. There's no linked data here. Uh, here's an example of sort of a work in progress of the same, this sort of the same a bib API that we would be posting to. Now, um, right now, this bib frame that we're sending in, it it has a combined work in instance together. The redevelopment of this API is going to first accept the work and then accept an instance. And so we'll probably have some flags for that, but be the same sort of structure. It'll be this uh, structure that you can find on Library of Congress. If you look at the Library of Congress, RDF XML for a work and the Library of Congress XML for an instance, it'll be that structure that you can post into Alma. Uh, so um, the two linked data editors that we've uh, experimented with at Penn, Marva and Sinopia. More recently, we've been looking at Marva, so I'll talk about that first. And Marva is what we are posting uh, linked data into Alma Sandbox with. Uh, Sinopia, we get enriched mark, so we're, we can post um, the, that linky mark into Alma. So first I'll talk about this, I would say, um, BibFrame RDF approach or sort of native BibFrame in the Library of Congress structure. So I'll talk about how we're posting that into our on the sandbox. Um, so the Marva linked data editor, you could try it out. Um, you go to bibframe.org slash Marva slash editor. This is where um, this bibframe, uh, this got hosted, I think around last summer, Matt Miller, I think uh, did a lot of good work to make this available. Um, and uh, it was also in the open source. So um, I, I was able to, to take a look at that and get it hosted for pen, but there's a nice uh, user manual. It's a libguide, looks like. Um, what you can do is uh, read through a lot of this. It's, it, it will be sort of LC specific, but a lot you can apply to um, your own implementation. Um, this is the editor layout. Um, it has this nice, um, so these, uh, this nice sort of box structure here where you can see your records. You can collaboratively look at everyone else's records. Um, there's also a way that we make loading existing data into the editor. Um, talk about that in a moment, but we had to do some configuration for Pen. So um, just some admin metadata uh, here and uh, sort of our organization code. I've, the changes that I've made um, just to configure it at Penn, I've, I've gotten those um, into um, the open source as well. So all of, I would say um, most everything minus sort of our API keys are available here um, in GitHub. There's another sort of one of those JSON things that are more for computers to look at. Um, but I will say, um, you know, I'm really grateful to the work that Matt Miller did um, and just, the Library of Congress work here, um, because what I did was follow their example for bibframe.org hosting and just uh, configure some of our backend utilities so that um, we could post it. We actually use the um, utility. This utility API is the one that we have a little bit of code in. It's not a huge software project, but it's really just the post command is configured here in this util API. Um, so that's the configuration. How we actually did it was, um, you know, in practice, uh, suppose we want to uh, use um, some existing data. Um, you can pull in, suppose you have like an order that has uh, you know, generated a short description and you want to enrich that description, you could just put in your MMS ID here. And uh, this is a configuration we did at Penn. Um, you use that RDF XML API really just to pull in the data. And as you can see, this is, this is the works as, as they have them now. This might change a little, but it does bring in quite a bit of the data that you might wanna edit. Um, then because the structures are very com uh, compatible, um, there might be a few nuances if uh, the transformation code gets a little bit uh, behind uh, the editor, but we can control uh, those things 
uh, we can control the editor. So the expectation for the editor is that the structure looks like Library of Congress structure. So for the most part, I think there are some, there might be some situations where we do have to make tweaks to how it pulls in the data model. But for the most part, the data model that you can find in Alma, you can very, for the most part, directly pull it in here and then make any edits and using that util API, we send it into our system. Again, the Alma sandbox, this is um, what we posted in. It's interpreting the record format as bib frame. Again, these are sort of like in development. So pretty soon, instead of this bib frame record, that's just a work and instance together, you'll be able to see a work and then the instances that are associated with it. So it'll be a bit popular, but it'll still have that structure of Library of Congress. Uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the MARVA. That's the newer thing that we've been doing. And um, I, I'll just uh, move on to the other linked data editor. This is uh, the Synopia to Alma approach, um, which is, you know, you can generate using your instance um, from your instance that has a work paired to it. You can generate some enriched mark, some linky mark you can send in. And that's what we've been doing into our sandbox. This relies on uh, work that came out of the LD4P3 grant. There was a framework uh, with the ability to export mark into an ILS, and there was some really good demonstration code. It had um, some great like abstractions so that, well, these were implemented for uh, Symphony and Folio. It was exciting just to kind of follow through, and, the, and there really is some nice software engineering just to walk through that. and you can sort of see uh, how it could be adapted to other ILSs. And um, yeah, it really just relied on configuring this um, uh, profile. Um, so this is an import profile specific to, um, X, you know, bring in uh, Mark XML. And here in our pen, this, although this says Synopia dev, I think we can do this in Synopia stage now where, um, you can export the catalog. Uh, this is a button once the um, once it's once we have our configuration set up. So that's something where, like if you're interested in experimenting with and you have Alma um, and you want to receive Linky Mark from Synopia, that's something that um, you know email me and I'll get you in touch with the people who can configure this. Essentially, what you need is your your import profile ID and your API key. Uh, preferably one that's pointing to your sandbox first, so you could just get some testing done. And then you do get uh, confirmation. So this is, again, based on the LD4 grant. So right now, uh, you know, it uh, has a lot of uh, the St Stanford developers who have been uh, working on that grant. Uh, but anyway, it generates this uh, email that tells you that uh, your uh, enrich mark has been posted into your ILS. So this is from Synopia to Pen ILS. Um, what um, the software that the middleware is uh, mostly reliant on is uh, Airflow. It's called uh, Apache Airflow. And this step is the same for anything, any ILS is you need to pull down the mark of the uh, instance that you're looking at. So it, it'll kick off this process to download Mark. And then this is the very almost specific thing where first we need to get into Mark XML, but we can't stop there because we need it with the, um, the bib tag in there. So we insert that bib root element and that's then sent to the API uh, that's posted into Alma. And then once Alma processes the Mark XML, it does return the MMS ID. And this we post back into Synopia's local admin metadata for the instance. So um, this is this is an example of local admin metadata, and I'm just going to view it here with the more of a graphic representation. Um, so you see the MMS ID and the Alma, and this has an association. This local admin metadata has an association back to the instance. Um, it'll tell you here. This is telling you what instance it applies to. 
Um, and then, so you get some very linky mark. And if you're interested in things like author cards uh, or knowledge cards, so author cards uh, are relying here on uh, LC name authorities. Um, you can also do um, more like topical exploration here. Um, you do get your, it says, you know, this, this is a work, it's an instance of uh, this work, and this is your instance link here. Um, you can also kind of create some rules if you want to normalize these in different places because um, your institution might want to do something different with this. But this is, I believe, Sum 58 is the guidance that you can find on um, sort of your eyes and mark the PCC guidance on Sum 58. Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, sort of something that I'm thinking about in the upcoming upcoming years to think about how we can normalize uh, the Sinopia structure uh, for the for Alma. And I don't think it'll be an issue. Uh, um, really, there's um, there is some ongoing work in the well, there's like a PCC affiliated group called the uh, Bitframe Interchange, Bitframe Interchange Group. And um, they're studying sort of not just interchange, but also uh, sort of like uh, a validation of uh, the frame model, so sh a shackle validation. So that's something that I think once that's available, it's very easily to use that approach. Um, and I would say that I have done a little bit of testing, just getting like a Synopia instance into, uh, if you take like your Synopia structure, getting it into this LOC structure, the instance one isn't too difficult to normalize. The work might be a, a little more normalization, but I actually think these are pretty straightforward engineering problems, um, data engineering problems. So it's not insurmountable. I think direct uh, bit frame from Synopia is possible. Um, so we could get that native thing um, in place. You know, I, I, I don't think we'll have a problem doing that once once we have an agreed upon sort of normalization approach. So that's where um, I'll stop for now. Um, what, I, what I hope people came away with was just how important the Alma APIs are and um, how those Alma APIs interface with uh, linked data editors. So if we can, if we can implement these um, restful approaches, ones that uh, the editors, they're both open source and configurable for these different, um, like in this case, they're configurable for, for Alma. Um, I think we'll be able to move the needle on BitFrame implementation and sort of realize some of the benefits of, of uh, getting um, to this entity-based search. Uh, available. So I, I am appreciative to Matt Miller help support the output of this uh, RDFXML in the almost structure. I'm also grateful to those at Xlibris who are working on this. I see I have a typo. <laughs> those who are working on API changes. Uh, and uh, I think it's an it's an evolution, uh, work in progress, but um, I've been I've been happy to see uh, the work that's uh, been going into this. And I'm, you know, I'm Deeply appreciative to, to all those who have uh, contributed to this work. So I'll stop there. I have to check the chat and Q&A. So uh, let me stop the share. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jim, for that presentation. Um, and there are a couple of questions uh, in our Q&A uh, already. And there may be a couple more in chat that I've lost track of myself. Uh, there was one request earlier uh, for you to share your the slide deck uh, for access to the links. Um, so we can make sure that goes out afterwards. Or if you're able to stick it in chat quickly now, that would be fantastic. Um, but the first question we have here uh is uh, from an anonymous attendee when our library experimented with alma linked data enrichment we found a lot of problems uh, for example the subfield zero with uris being added to fields where the subfield zero was not valid urls being added to the uris uris pointing to local triple stores instead of authoritative sources etc have these issues caused problems in upenn's linked data implementation
Yeah, um, I would say that uh, when we identify, so what, yeah, so why we've used a sandbox, I would say um, in the Alma sandbox, we've evaluated like how the records are coming in. Um, this is in regards to like Sinopia, when like the generation of the mark happens, um, we can see it in Alma, like what it's looking like. And what we've done is just sort of followed up with um, those in the LD4P3 project with um, creating uh, GitHub issues. And those are more or less getting addressed, I would say, um, because it is a grant project, sometimes there's other priorities, but I think um, a majority of the things that we saw um, either had fixes or um, had fixes for the enriched mark or um, can, can be addressed with um, new transformation approaches. So um, yeah, it's, I do, I do think that it's not, uh, it's not a perfect uh, implementation right now in any sense. It's a, uh, uh, a phase of a phase of development that is is moving on from uh, having the data model, having like revised the data model, and now we're kind of working out how our current systems um, are going to interface with it. And there's going to be some smoothing out that needs to happen. And so those are some of the normalization approaches that um, I've been engaged in. But I I do think it's sort of uh, iteratively. I think it's uh, I mean, I'd be curious to see if like the tests uh, now are some of the same things that you've seen before, if you've made um, like adjustments, but I, I do think our, our approach has been to evaluate things that are coming in, fix what we can and uh, keep iterating. All right, thank you. Uh, and just to everybody, please, uh, a few more questions have come in, but please do continue to post them in the Q&A. Um, the next question is from Leslie Engelson. We enhance our MARC records with URIs using MARC edit before we import the records into Alma. Is this unnecessary as it can be, or perhaps is done in Alma? I think I understand the concepts of what you were talking about, Jim. The details of how to implement any of it is beyond me though. Is there any documentation that walks a complete novice through understanding what the APIs do and implementing them? Or is this stuff beyond the ability of someone who doesn't know programming? Well, I think, uh, so I think um, it depends on like what what is gonna be valuable to you in terms of like, so not everything needs a URI, certainly. Um, so there could be some common, there's some, perhaps some common URIs that Alma can, perhaps do for you. And I would approach it maybe from the standpoint of like how how your institution wants to approach like authority management in some regards. Um, it's sort of like that, but perhaps uh, has some additional nuances too. Uh, that being said, um, there might be some URIs that um, you can, I mean, it sounds like you're doing Mark like you had enrich it through mark edit. So those are probably common ones, but if there are some less common ones that you wanna add that say aren't in Alma, I think, it's a, I think that's okay to, to add those there. I would say Alma's evolving too. So um, it's kind of this dance between what you want your ILS to be able to do for you and what you find important. And then also what can you like leverage in discovery? So like right now author cards, um, the open source, I, I think the one that Primo, you can enable in sort of Primo Studio to a very large extent, it's gonna grab uh, LC name authority files and to a smaller extent, I think you can, it can also pull in VF identifiers. Those two, I think would be the basis for most of what you can get from author cards right now. But um, there's probably down the road, you could do more with the information uh information cards for like collecting all related works from an author um and to a certain extent you could do some of that with oclc numbers right now if those are available um and then the last part of your question i think was about like sort of documenting like what's available in terms of like how to move this forward um i think that like within the uh, ld4p3 community or I, I guess it's just called, so LD4P3 is the grant and 
the LD4 community has uh, several affinity groups. I think Wikidata is a great entry point, the Wikidata affinity group, um, because you could get uh, some good ideas for tools and um, basically uh, uh, a group that is looking at one of the largest implementations of like a knowledge graph, and that's excellent training. But I would also give a shout out to the, um, the PCC um, LD4 affinity group for Synopia. I think they're a good entry point because um, they can just walk you through like, here's creating a record uh, in Synopia. Here's, here's what cataloging is like. And by record, I mean like a set of entities that might be like a work, an instance entity. And here's how you can generate mark from that. The part that sending it into the, uh, sending it into Alma, I mean, that's something that, uh, you send me an email, I could put you in touch with the folks who like, once you get an API key and a profile key, um, actually you don't have to do a lot of configuration because we can reuse that data flow. So um, I think that, you know, with with the affinity groups and, um, you know, with the data flows that the LD4 P3 grant have in place, I think you could find support, but um, yeah, I think it's, uh, might take some time to like wrap your mind around like what's what's ever you know here's all the pieces and so we have like the link data editor there's the middleware and then we need to get the api keys but like once we put all those things together um i think we can get any library there really all right thank you uh next question is from jeanette norris in all cases, are the BibFrame records imported into Alma converted to MARC, or is there link data storage available in Alma? Sorry, I muted myself. Um, well, um, right now what's stored in Alma, so there's what's available now and what's being planned. Um, what's available in Alma now is it can store like the XML of it. So you have like this XML file that's stored when, when you send the BibFrame in. Um, I think there are plans or there's an awareness of the need to be able to generate mark uh, from that bib frame. You wouldn't be able to see it right now in the sandbox. So um, that's not available, but it's uh, I, it's been identified with Ex Libris uh, product folks. So they know about that. Um, and they're also uh, keenly aware of um, the need for uh, like some sort of potentially having a graph database in the future. That's not like phase one of what they're doing right now, but I think that's it's understood that that's something that can help them really take advantage. Like some of the, like all authors, their related works, all works that are related to these subjects. So I think, um, I think they're aware of that. And you can even find a blog post on some Neo4j implementations. Uh, some, if you want to practice with some of the LD4, um, uh, it's not LD4, uh, JSON LD, sorry. So some of the JSON LD coming out of Alma, you can ingest it into Neo4j and kind of play around with that. Um, but yeah, right now uh, Alma is, is able to like store that XML, so. That answers the question, but feel free to email me if you have one more detail. All right. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, quite a few more questions coming in, so uh, which is which is fantastic. Um, try to get to as many of them as we can. Uh, David Schuster asks, what kind of applications do you see uh, are possible in Primo with the linky mark? Do fields link effectively compared to authority control from LCNAF, for example? Okay, I just um, I just managed to get my slides um, shared quickly. Um, Thank you. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, so the linky mark um, actually need to. I don't know enough about sort of. It sounds like like how um these are kept like up to date like if suppose like the identifiers uh i think once you have the linky mark in there i think you would need to make edits um if suppose you wanted to say pull in more recent data 
Um, I'm not actually sure how that authority management happens right now. In terms of like, what are the applications in Discover? I think the linky mark does help you with um, your author cards. So if you enable like within Primo, if you enable like um, in Primo Studio, if you enable author cards, you're getting benefits from the 100s, um, 100XX. And I think to a certain extent, the 700XX, you can, um, like the author added, added entry authors in the seven XXs. Um, so you can get benefits from one XX right now and seven XXs. Um, for subjects, um, I'm not, I think you could do, uh, I don't know, I don't know enough about the implementation, but I think the, with some tweaking, you could probably leverage subjects uh, too. Uh, if you want to see an example of that, if you go to id.llc.gov, if you search for works, if you do just like a search on works at id.llc.gov, it'll show you the associated subjects. If you click on those subjects, it'll tell you like what works are connected to this subject. And that's pretty interesting. Um, I think ShareVD is also starting to have subject exploration as well. So if you go to like svde.org, you might be able to get some ideas for that as well. All right, thank you very much. Uh, our next question uh, is from Laura Ackerman. Uh, it says, Jim, it looks like for Marva, you are actually able to import to Marva from Alma Mark converted to Bibframe. So it could be edited there. For Sinopia, would you be able to do the same thing? Um, I think it's possible. Uh, we didn't, uh, we don't have that data flow in place yet, but um, I think that's a that's really a desired. Like, there are these data elements that exist out there that um, catalogers really want to start from prior work, and so I think um, yes, you can pull in. Uh, I think in the future, you'll be able to pull that in. Uh, I talked a little bit with Jeremy about this the last time we had a, a summit in person, and um, I think it's feasible. Um, so it's, it's not quite there yet, but um, what, what you can do is I think through the QA service, like the questioning authority service has cached some, uh, some works and some instances from, it might be the PCC data pool that you could pull those in. I think uh, in some cases you might be losing uh, some data because some triples, I mean, the structure of the triples might not map cleanly just yet, but I think uh, you you do benefit from using sort of the QA service in some places. And certainly I think you can search id.loc.gov. So if you wanted to make associations with um, existing works, uh, you could do that. All right. Uh, I think you may have already largely answered this this question um, from anonymous attendee, but if there's, see if there's any other th thoughts you might have. Um, I'm very interested in this topic, but I'm a beginner. Do you have any recommendations for sites or webinars that would help provide some additional beginner content? And you you touched on a lot of those already, but is there anything else that would be a great starting point for someone just getting there, just getting into this? Yeah. Um... Let's see, I'm going to drop the link in for the LD4 community because I, I think if you're if you're just getting started, probably the LD4 community is a great starting play, place. And then um, they have these. Um, I wonder if you can find the, uh, yeah. So let me get this link. The affinity groups is kind of what I'm thinking of, uh, and maybe I could drop that chat there. So within within the LD4 community, you have these affinity groups. I think the Wikidata affinity group is a great starting place. Um, and there's lots and lots of recordings, lots and lots of community input, uh, just lots of people you can learn from there. And then uh, if you're interested in kind of dipping your toes into like the linked data editors, um, it's the, the PCC Synopia um, linked data. So that affinity group, sorry. Um, that's where I think beginners are, you know, beginners are uh, welcome, encouraged to attend. Um, 
yeah, I can't say enough about the affinity group. I think like if anyone came to me and said, you know, I just want to get started learning linked data, I would say those are those wiki data affinity groups are great places because it is a great environment of learning. It's a great nexus of like tools, data, uh, people, interesting projects. Uh, yeah, that that's a great starting place. And then you could branch out. There's like a wiki based affinity group, which is like the software that runs Wikidata is Wikibase. So if you wanted to, you know, dig into something more technical, you can do that. Um, we have, a, there's affinity groups for like non-Latin script. There's an affinity group for rare materials. So I, I do think that community is probably a great starting place. Right, that sounds like a great, great place to start then. Thank you. Uh, we're getting down. We have a couple of questions left uh, so far. There may be a couple of things in the chat that I've missed. Um, we have another uh, question from an anonymous attendee asking, is Penn making use of any of this linked data beyond simply publishing it? What use cases do you see once your catalog records are fully in linked data? Yeah. Um, yeah, right now we, well, we are, uh, participants in the uh, PC, uh, not PCC. Well, there's the Share VDE. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah. So we have um, so this entity based catalog that, uh, let's see, Share VDE. So we worked um, at, before, before we even got to Penn, there was an initiative at Penn that was working on sort of this. Uh, entity-based search and ShareVD has really evolved over time. And so we have a pen skin that's kind of in beta, but it's like, it allows you to search. This is basically a search into a bit frame uh, description. Um, and so I think discovery, uh, we've, we started to do uh, a couple of user studies on this. We have probably about 10 to 15 users now that we've talked to about how they might make use of this. And so what we're going to do once we have this like entity, once we have this like entity search and it's uh, something that we have, you know, a lot of, we want to integrate it into like our Bento environment. So like things that are on the drawing board are uh, like entity-based autocomplete. So yeah, you can think of like really well, um, really well curated uh, auto suggest functionality. So like names and works. So author names, author works that you can search really well. And then also um, some of the newer pages that have been developed in ShareVDE are like topical exploration events um, and people. So um, you can actually you know, like Wikidata pulls in uh, descriptions of entities that are Wikidata. So that's been brought into like the search interface and uh, show me Oh yeah. All uh, right. <laughs> We've got the, the, there's a huge data load happening. So there could be uh, some problems currently, but uh, that, that should clear up. All right. Uh, we have a question in the Q and A and then one additional one that I think came out of the chat uh, so far. Um, so the last Q and A question is also from Laura Ackerman. The integrations I've heard about between ILS systems and linked data editors, data stores, all seem to have converting to Mark as the last step before importing the data to the ILS. When do you think we will be able to leave the Mark behind? Because not everything in BibFrame or RDA and RDF can be expressed in Mark. No, that's a good point. Um... I, well, we do have the example in Marva where we can post the native BibFrame, so we don't Let's see, we, we can get the bib frame into our ILS without it being Mark. I think there's, I mean, just speaking to like the environment that we find ourselves in, I think there's a need. I think like there's a need to, like for speaking for Penn, like our own implementation of discovery is like we have Blacklight. Blacklight isn't right now going to index that bib frame structure, but I think uh, natively, I think Primo could probably take advantage of BibFrame where, you, you know, because it's uh, because it's already in like the Alma system and uh, the Alma system can does have ways to interpret that XML. Um, probably the native Primo 
uh, wouldn't require you to convert it back to Mark. So I think, um, of course, I think Mark's going to be around for a long time. Um, I think they're going to exist side by side. Uh, and I don't know that it needs to be a problem. I think it can be reassuring uh, because it's, you know, whenever you implement something new, um, people like the old thing better. So you need to have both for a time. And there's a lot of systems. I mean, the whole process is the UC Davis that had the UC Davis had the Bibflow grant. And I think they looked at like all the steps uh, where you need Mark and it's it's everywhere, right? So um, I, can, I won't try to make a prediction about that. I, th I think uh, I do find Mark to be a little comforting. I, I think that that's, it's good that we have there. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I think in the case of Alma, you might see native native bib frame possible for searching in Primo. So I think that in some places where we could be there, but if you look at like what vendors give you, what um, when will vendors give you everything in bib frame? When will acquisitions be able to handle everything in bib frame? That's yeah, something to th be thinking about. Uh, uh, and we're coming up on the top of the hour, so they're running out of time. But there is one more question that actually I think dovetails nicely with uh, with with that previous one. Um, it is asking you to look into your crystal ball again, however, so that's as risky as that is. Um, but uh, thank you for sharing the ongoing work uh, at Penn. Uh, if possible, could you please share any insights you have about link data editor implementation by XLibris that regular Alma users would be able to work with? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that. Um, I think they've uh, evalu They're in a evaluation evaluation stage, from what I understand, and I'd probably need uh, need to punt on this a little. I do know that it's my understanding that they look at what's in the open source. So they look at what is available with Snopia. They're looking at what's available in. Uh, what the Library of Congress has, has made in the open source. So here's some open source tools um, and their AP, if their APIs can interface with them, I think it's a good idea to reuse like these existing systems. I don't know. Um, I think there might be some needs for like, if you, if you were in the Alma backend and you needed to do something quickly, there might be a need for that. But I, I, I would hope that we don't completely recreate um, a Synopia or Marva, but perhaps there could be a hosted Marva that Alma makes available, uh, Xlibris makes available, or a hosted Synopia that Xlibris makes avail available. But I do find an API strategy helps obviate any sort of lock-in. So that's, I think that's a, a wise uh, implementation path for now. Okay. And if, I do see that one attendee has uh, their hand raised and let me figure out how to grant them. Uh, actually, there's a couple. Um, so first, uh, Astrid, did you have a question? I've activated your microphone. Are you there, Astrid, enabled to speak? Looks like you're on a phone connection, so you may need to unmute on your end. If not, um, okay. Let's. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure Jim would welcome a question by email um, uh, after this, and uh, so make sure that that we have that met, shared uh, after the talk. Um, let me just wrap up uh, here by returning to the, my slide deck, perhaps. Um, and so I just wanted to give a brief, well, first, thank you very much to Jim for this very interesting uh, presentation and overview, um, as well as for so ably fielding a wide range of questions um, about linked data and uh, doing doing your best to predict the future which is you know always always a huge challenge in technology 
I did want to highlight uh, our next uh, our next event, which is scheduled for the uh, for April twenty sixth. Um, and if I'm dexterous enough to talk and copy and paste links, uh, I will do that. Um, there is, if you are interested in joining, uh, presenting a lightning talk, uh, we welcome your, your proposals. Um, and that is this link here in the chat. And you are also invited just to sign up for the, the webinar when it happens um, to get it on your calendars. Uh, and that link is there. Um, so and so this is going to be a, a series of lightning talks from the community about utilizing linked data features in Ex Libris products, uh, product or products. Um, so we really look forward to hearing what all of you have figured out and have learned or uh, and, and have been able to demonstrate. So with that, I believe, uh, unless anybody on our panel has anything, any closing, closing words, I'd like to thank all of you for attending. Once again, thank Jim for his excellent presentation. And we look forward to seeing you in this venue uh, in about three months. Thanks very much, everyone.